All right, this is the 7th uh, grade TCAP practice test, uh, the math section, question number 37. The table shows the relationship between the number of books Julie checked out from the library, which is in the first column here. This is the number of books she checked out. And then the time spent at the library for each visit. So obviously, as you can see, the more she checks out, the uh, more time she spends at the library, except not always. I mean, it sort of goes up a little bit, goes up, and then it it actually goes down here, even though she checked out eight books that time. Maybe she bought a series and they were all together. Who knows? Which of these best describes this relationship? In order for us to understand that, we have to talk about what each word means. Uh, linear has the word line in it. And we draw a line it, uh, in, on a coordinate plane, anyway. You can see that for each part it goes over, it has to go up the same amount or down, depending on the direction of the line. So what should happen is the more books she checks out, it goes the same amount each time she checks out one more book. But we have to adjust just a little bit. What we're going to talk about is the difference between one level and another. Essentially, we're doing slope here. So in the first situation, she checked out one book. In the second situation, she checked out three. So that would be two books difference between 8 and 16. That would be 8 difference. So in order to figure out what the slope is or how much it's changed, we have to do 8 divided by 2. Well, 8 divided by 2 is, of course, 4. Now we're going to go up again. In the next situation, she only checked out one more book. But in that case, it took uh, 28 minus 16 would be 12. So I do 12 divided by 1. So it goes up 12 this time. See, it took her significantly more time to do this um, math, or to check out one more book, than it did to pick out two books originally, or the difference anyway. So it's not the same every single time. It takes her a lot more time here than it would normally. So it's not a linear relationship. Otherwise, every time we found out the difference on the left side and the difference on the right, and then did a nice little fraction and uh, came up with a number here, this number would be the same. Now if it was 12 divided by 3 and it gave me 4, and then say the next time I had um, 24 divided by 6, and they all came out to be 4 every time, then the slope is constantly changing. So it would be a linear relationship. In this case, it's just not. Uh, the next type that I'm going to talk about is directly proportional. Directly proportional relationship would mean that whatever I multiplied the number in the first column by to get the second number, it would be the same every time. So when I, I'm going to look left to right here, 1 times something will give me 8. Well, I know my question mark is, of course, 8. So what I should look at is to see if in the first column, if I multiply that number by 8, will I get the second number? So let's look at the second uh, column here, or row, I should say. 3 times 8 is 24. It's not 16. So since that doesn't work, 4 times 8 does not give me 28. 6 times 8 doesn't give me 48. It never really works out except in the first one. So this is not a directly proportional relationship. The next type we have to think about is inverse. Inverse relationships mean if you multiply a number uh, times the first number times the second number, or the number in column one versus the number in column two, you'll get the same number every time. A uh, really common one would be like uh, if two is in the first column and the second column had half, so this is what our column looked like. Well, two times one half is one, and say the next one was four and one fourth. Well, four times one fourth is one, and then 15 and one fifteenth, and that also shockingly gives you one because you're basically eliminating the top and the bottom and all you're left with is the one. That's an inversely proportional relationship. But we already said that the number doesn't work out that way. Well, one t if I did 8 divided by 1, and let's just balance it out or whatever, uh, 8 divided by 1 would give me 8. Well, 16 divided by 3 doesn't give me 8. So that inverse proportional relationship doesn't work. So if you see the inverse proportion, multiply the number in the first column by the second column. If each one of them happens to give you the same number, like they're all three or they're all five, it's probably that. If you multiply the first number times some number and you get the second column, it's probably a directly proportional relationship. Um, in this case, it isn't. It's not inverse, inversely proportional either. And for linear, the changes is what you look at. You look at the slope every time. Nonlinear is the only thing left. It means anything goes. Nonlinear means there's just some relationship. And if I were to graph this, uh, say 1, 8 was here, and then 3, 16 was here, and 4, 28 was way up here, and, you know, 
anything that doesn't really fit. And then this 826 would actually drop back down, so it goes like this. That's a completely nonlinear relationship. If you find no pattern at all, nonlinear. So question number 37, the answer is B, because we have a classic nonlinear relationship.